another concert in a series. This time, the Newport Jazz Festival performance by Blues singer, piano, and composer. Welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name's Elliot and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today we're going to talk about the Black Crows Octo. This is a rare treat for me. I am used to being the person who gets the skis last. If you look at my channel, I get the skis months and months after most other channels and they will put them out after they've reviewed it, like months after. So I'm getting the skis somewhere between three to six months behind most other reviewers. And for some of my reviews, it is, I'm on a ski that is already gone. I just reviewed the Vocal Kendo 88. Turns out they're getting rid of it. <laughs> By the time I even get my hands on the skis, some of them are gone, changing or disappearing. So for the first time, and because I love working with Black Crows, big shout out to them. I am skiing on the 2025 Black Crows Octo. According to the rep I'm working with, I'm one of the first people in North America to ski on these, and one of the first to review them. And I'm here to give you my honest opinion about them. And spoiler alert, this is one of the coolest skis I've ever seen. So just starting out, in hand, I skied this in a 179.3, can almost round up to 180. It has an 84 millimeter width underfoot, so, kind of in that sweet spot that I like. My Mavericks are an 88. I really like anywhere from 80 to 90. I think that's such a fun carving ski when it comes to width. And then it's got a 14 meter radius. That's right, this is the little brother to the Black Crow nearest core. Now they don't market it that way. No one from Black Crows told me that. But if you just look at it, the design is very, very similar to the Mirrors Core. It's got that short turn radius, 14 meters, very aggressive. It's got that kind of different tail. But the biggest similarity you see is the tips look very similar to what you see on that Mirrors Core. Kind of that flat top with a very responsive, ready to set up, easy to hook up carved turn. This is very similar to the Mirrors Core, but I will say, I like it a lot more than the Mirror's Core. It has a lot of the good features without a lot of bad, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. When it comes to tip splay, pretty healthy amount there in the shovel. I would say actually a fairly healthy amount of camber. The shape doesn't convey it as well, but you can kind of feel the spring underfoot. Very springy. And then you've got this very unique tail. Now, it's a little bit similar to the Mirror's Core, but this ridge line doesn't go down as far and you don't get that kind of dead spot in the tail where it can wash out and, you know, kind of almost um, give away underneath your foot when you try to really launch yourself off the tails. I would say this is probably one of the biggest improvements from a design perspective, in my opinion. It kind of gives you that soft spot towards the tips while still feeling firm under your foot. But now that we've talked about that, let me talk about the things I really like with this construction. Now one, I took this ski actually for a few days skiing. And I had one day where it was just normal, you know, kind of skiing on the groomers, which was very good. But the second day, I actually got into some powder, 
And there's a reason that they don't go completely flat with these. When you get into the powder, this little bit of shape towards the top actually breaks the powder and allows the powder to kind of go on either side of the ski. And what that does is it prevents it from getting totally hung up. I found these in the powder to actually do decently well. Now, more than four or five inches, I really wouldn't enjoy it and it struggled in the heavier snow, but in the light fresh powder, this being a really excellent carving ski, I will say it was actually fairly fun in the powder and really fun in the tree. So I like this tip design. I also found that it didn't get that speed wobble, it didn't catch the wind like the Mirror's Core does. This ski was much more stable at high speeds and I like this subtle difference in tip design. It's really hard to see, but there's just this little notch at the top that really makes a difference while still giving you that kind of squared up, ready to turn shape in the tip. And lastly, like I said before, that tail. The tail on the Mirror's Core had such a limit with once you got onto the tail on a certain part and all your weight was on one half, it would kind of give way. This doesn't do that. This still gives you that sweet turn radius with the tail, but it's solid in the middle and gives you a strong platform to launch out of. As you can see, I am just so, so excited about these skis. I'm out here in the storm. I'm out here <laughs> with it raining, but I want to tell you about these skis because these were so cool. I really think, you know, I know the Mirror's Core people have talked about being the future and it is a little bit more designated towards the freestyle skier, but I think for carving, this is the future of skiing. This is the future of ski design. This is easily probably my 2025 ski of the year so far. Um, it might be the best carving ski I've skied on all year. This is just a blast. So let me tell you more about it though. So first let's talk about the good and then we'll talk about the bad. Now, I already told you most of the good, but let's kind of run back through it. This is my favorite carving ski that I've skied on all year. So this is probably a ski of the year contender for 2025. It was just that amazing. It makes a great platform when you're carving. It makes a great platform with short turns, big turns. It's really, like I said, a stable platform for you to build pressure and kind of manipulate the ski. But what it has that I really like about it is it has a strong kind of punch out of the turn. It's one thing to build up your pressure and kind of send the ski where you want, but it's another one to kind of punch out and rock it out of that turn into the next one. And that's where that ski really thrives. If you're somebody who likes kind of the final third of your turn and wants to launch into the next one, this ski will give you, I don't know, it'll just send you off and really give you a run for your money. I like the tip shape. Um, this kind of takes that Elon ripstick style and takes it up to 11, it's really easy to initiate, but it doesn't do it for you, which has been a big complaint with the Redster series, with the Mirror's Core series. I like that the ski is ready to turn, it's ready to build up pressure easily, but it doesn't do it for you. Whatever they did, I think it's with the tail shape, where, or maybe it's the tip shape, but it just waits long enough for you to build up pressure so you can get your timing down, build up the pressure, and then rock it across the hill. The other thing that I loved about this ski is it has great flexibility in its radius. You look at a ski like this, you think 14 meter radius turns, it's only going to be short little turns, it's only going to be blue square, green circle. It's not, actually. I took this on steep runs, big black diamonds, big open faces, and it has a ton of flexibility with what kind of turns you can make. I can make GS turns, I could take it on the Super G Hill and still launch through it. What an amazing ski that you can not only get a 14 meter radius turn, but be stable at high speeds and still open it up even to a GS turn. I found with a little bit of timing, a little bit of mastery on when you flex, this ski just had a tremendously diverse set of turn radiuses that you could set it up for. Like I said, it also was really fun with kind of the quick little pull plants that you make along the way. It also, surprisingly, was really fun in the trees. Because it's got that short radius, you can make those little pull plant turns and bounce from tree turn to tree turn. So that was really cool. I like that about this ski. It's nice to have a, a ski where you can not only just kind of glide and go through the groomed runs, but also get in between those little areas and find stashes of snow. It's nice to ski a ski that's not only fun when you're carving, but also does well in the trees. And you know, that really opens up a lot of options for you when you're skiing. And I was very pleasantly surprised because this is probably the top carving ski I've skied on all year. Um, and the fact that it allowed me to have fun off trail and kind of break up my day was a just, I don't know, like a really pleasant surprise. Like I said before, the ski was stable at speeds, which I appreciated. None of that speed wobble or speed chatter. 
even though it's kind of a similar tip to the Mirs Core, I found that it didn't catch the wind unless you were going really fast. Like I had to be tucking on the Super G Run to find any kind of wind resistance on the tip, but that's pushing it. It's not nearly as aggressive as the Mirs Core, and maybe it's this little kind of notch at the top, but it kind of does a better job of breaking the wind. The other big thing that I like about this ski is I like the smooth flex progression. I like the way you can build pressure in the middle of the ski and kind of get that softer tip that's gonna make way. But I like that it's progressive. Some skis do it too quickly or some skis are kind of too damp and they don't give it back to you at all. This ski is just like really gradual and it, it almost feels like they learned from the materials in the Draco Freebird in that way that once you kind of massage the energy by flexing the front of your boot, you can gradually build a lot of energy and really, it's like putting in your hands when you wanna set what kind of turn radius you really want out of it. Like I said before, this ski honestly fixes all of my complaints about the Mirrors Core. It's like somebody took every single item list that I complained when I did my Mirrors Core review and completely filled in the holes and fixed it. And I'm just amazed by the progression from the Mirrors Core to this, and I think that this ski is just a phenomenal ski for aggressive skiers. I don't think they're getting rid of the Mirrors Core, but it feels like it serves such a wider audience for really, really aggressive skiers and people who like to go fast, that want that short turn radius, that want that aggressive skiing, but also want to be able to go at high speeds and blend their lines together. All right, now that we've talked about the good, <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest, that's about 90% of the ski is just good. Let's talk about the bad, because if you go out and spend your hard-earned money on these skis, you're gonna wanna know the good and the bad. And to be honest, there's not a lot bad with this. I think that this is a very, very good carving ski. Just from a carving perspective, I can't find a lot wrong with it. Now, if you are somebody who likes kind of that Vocal M6 Mantra or Nordica Enforcer, the new one, and you want kind of like a just cruising ski, you could do that in this, but you're not getting as much out of it. This is a ski for people who like to make quick turns, who like to work on their slalom to GS turns. It's for very aggressive carvers. So if you're just looking for like a smooth ride, probably a Stokely is more in line with that. This is a smooth ride, but it's really, its first priority is good turn shape. Um, but you know, that being said, it's not, I, it's not a noticeable difference in dampness, but it's just not its priority. It's not a big, heavy, dense ski. This is a very aggressive, very lively, snappy, in and out of turn kind of ski. It likes to be turned, it wants to be turned. It wants somebody who's aggressive with their turns and, or who just, you know, is, is liking to make lots of little quick turns. If you're somebody who straight lines down the hill, sure, that like very small amount of the audience, this probably isn't a good fit for, but, <laughs> You know, for those people, you can go out and buy race skis or Super G skis. Um, the other thing I noticed is like with the Atomic Maverick, I think that ski does a little bit better job blending the on-trail and off-trail. I would say this is more like 75 to 80% on-trail. That's where this thing thrives. It can go off-trail, like I said, but it just doesn't blend the two as well as a ski like that. It's kind of like you have to really shift gears in your skiing versus an Atomic Maverick. So that's a slight, slight downside though. I mean, and it's only noticeable because the Atomic Maverick and the Solomon QSD do it so well <laughs> that you would notice it. If it weren't for those skis, you wouldn't even think of that. But you know, just so you know, you do have to shift gears a little bit when you get into deeper snow because this is primarily a carving ski. Now that we've talked about the good, we've talked about the bad, let's talk score. I'm gonna tell you honestly, for carving skis, this is my ski of the year pick. This was my favorite ski to carve on. This is honestly for score an easy 9.6. It is so good at carving. It is so good at snapping your turns. It is so good at like, if you wanna gradually build your pressure, getting it on edge. This is my favorite carving ski. The, my favorite carving ski I've been on all year. I did some Rosignol designated carving skis. I've skied the Atomic Redsters. I've seen a lot of carving skis. I have a race background where I've been on slalom, GS skis, you name it. I've skied it in a race ski. And this is my favorite carving experience. It's just so reactive. It's so aggressive. It's so responsive to your boot pressure. It does such a good job with the material. It finally fixes, in my opinion, the Mirrors Core's kind of washed out tails. It gives you the responsiveness of the Mirrors Core with the stability of an Atomic Maverick. I think that this is a new ski that I will suggest as one of my top skis. 
I think the Atomic Maverick is like a really good 50-50 on trail, off trail. I think the Salomon QST 92 is better for people who are 60 off trail, 40 on trail. And I think if you are 80% to 75% on trail, this is the new ski that I'll recommend. It doesn't blend the lines as well, right? You definitely have to change your focus when you take these off the groomed path. But when you're on the groomed path, when you're on a groomed trail, when you just want a responsive turn, this is the best ski I've seen for that. So for me, it's an easy 9.6. It might even be closer to a 9.7, but I am very, very thrilled by this ski. This was an absolute treat, an absolute joy. And Black Crows, thank you for sending me these. I was not paid by Black Crows. I'm not sponsored by them. I have no affiliation with them. I just test their skis and tell you my honest opinion. And with the Mir's Core, I did not give it nearly as high of a score as this, but this ski, in my opinion, is a big improvement, for at least for what I'm looking at of a ski. I'm not a freestyle skier. I get that the audience is a little different, but this is, this is an absolute home run from Black Crows, and I was thrilled to ski on these, so 9.6. I loved being on these skis. This is a ski that I would absolutely purchase for myself. So anyway, that's the end of the review. Kind of cool to be on a brand new ski like this, so thank you to Black Crows for sending it. So if you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. That's a free way to support the channel. I'll also have an affiliate link for my personal skis down below. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member today. You know, that's a way to kind of financially support the channel. But more than anything, I just want to say thank you for watching my videos. Because you guys have been watching these videos, because you've been so supportive, I've been able to get new skis like this. And I'm, it's not lost on me that that's because of you guys. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.